We've got home again, or as I call it, rich white lady problems. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Oh, boy. Okay, yeah. yes. It was, it was written and directed by Haley Myers Shire, whose mother is Nancy Myers, who made Something's Gotta Give, The Holiday, What Women Want, The Parent Trap with Lindsay Lohan. Oh, so she's man. basically, she redefined the kind of rom-com genre for that specific sort of subset of kind of nice Hamptons-esque mm-hmm. white lady comedies. And her father is Charles Shire, who made Father of the Bride, Smokey the Bandit, and I Love Trouble, and also, like, produced on half the Nancy Myers movies. Oh, no way. So he yeah. did the original Father of yes. the Bride, not the Steve Martin one. No, the Steve Martin one. The Steve oh, Martin oh, one. Oh, yes. okay. Yeah, he's not that old. <laughs> <laughs> okay. um, he's older, but not that old. Um, so basically, she comes from, like, the first family of rom-coms, essentially. And I give her credit for not being afraid to follow in her parents' footsteps, because you know she's going to get compared to them, which I'm about to do, because she did not learn from them. It felt like someone was doing a bad impression of a Nancy Myers movie, which it turns out someone was doing a bad impression of a Nancy Myers movie. And her mom, Nancy Myers, produced this movie, and I was just like, this is what happens when people, like, children are just allowed to run loose with their parents' money. You know, yeah. like, you know what? I'm going to make a movie. I'm going to get Reese Witherspoon to star in it. So, I don't know. I basically, this movie, just like, no thank you. Reese Witherspoon plays this 40-year-old woman with, like, two kids and husband troubles, and she moves across the country to, from New York to L.A. to, like, figure things out, and conveniently moves into this palatial L.A. mansion, and, you know, that would come straight out of Architectural Digest and stuff like that. I was like, that must be nice. When most of us move to L.A., it's still, like, a hovel with five roommates and stuff like that. <laughs> yeah. So, I was like, all right, it's a fantasy movie. I get it. And her father conveniently happens to be a famous movie maker, so I guess, you know, write what you know. Yeah. <laughs> and, sure. and her, the character's mother is uh, supposed to be an actress who starred in all the movies, and it's played by Candace Bergen, who I actually love, but oh, yeah. I think she's, she needs to lay off the work on her face. Candace Bergen, you're beautiful. Uh, like, yes. Stop. Just and, stop. And she put on weight as we do. As yeah, you that's age. fine. And sh- but she, I think it works for her body, too. Yeah. So why do all the extra stuff? Exactly. Yeah. So that was just, I was like, oh, Candace. Anyway, so this crazy fantasy twist of fate, these three young up-and-coming genius filmmakers who moved to L.A. to make their dream film just happen to end up meeting her, and then they stay in her guest house. Oh, yes. by the way, she has a guest house. Again, yeah. fantasy. <laughs> <laughs> so I I don't know if it's just because I'm older and I've gotten more disillusioned or that these, like, Nancy Myers template movies are getting worse, mm-hmm. but I do not enjoy these movies anymore. Like, I'm just like, this is absurd and insane, right. and I haven't gone back and watched any of the classic ones in a long time, and now I'm afraid to because I enjoyed them for what they were, but now I'm like, oh, y- y'all are crazy. Like, this is <laughs> this is not real life. And, of course, it's the movies. It's escapism, but there's a line. So the beginning of the film, I'm assuming, for just based on the trailer, is her, like, in a bar celebrating her birthday yep. with her girls, and yep. she's newly single, newly divorced. New- uh, no, no, no. Right? That's uh, that's a whole plot line that was so unnecessary. Qu- they're they're separated. Okay. So we d- will they, won't they get back together? It okay. It's just like, oh, my God, and then, I don't care. And then a random 21-year-old kid, let's be honest, he looked like a little he kid. He looks like 12. Compared to her. Yeah you know, starts hitting on her, and she goes home with him. Yes. And then next thing you know, yeah. he moves into the right. guest house. I'm like, what? what? But it's not just she goes home with him. She brings his two Uh-oh. friends with her. No, Wait, I mean, like, a, right, 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 right. Yeah, so they, yeah, yeah. 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 I was like, go, yeah. Reese, you get it, you get it. So, like, no, so she brings, he's like, okay, I get it. Like, you know what? 40 doesn't mean you're dead. Like, bring yeah. him home. But I guess they all, like, go crash at her house and, like, the two friends, you know, pass out on the couch. And then the result is, there's, I'm just going to spoil this part. I'm sorry. Candace Bergen comes in and is like, you should let them stay with you. I like them because yeah. they compliment her for having been in the movies because they're obsessed with her father. I was like, uh, this is weird and gross and, like, daddy issues. And yeah. I just, oh, there's so many things wrong with this. Also, so the, the chemistry between her and the young dude, it's like wet paper bags. Sure. Like, I was just like, this feels icky. Yeah. I don't like this. I, I don't think there's anything wrong with ladies like cougaring because they make a point in the movie like men do it all the time i'm like yeah that's fair but no thank you i just it was so i kept i kept checking my watch that's what happened i just was so bored by it i was like okay what convenient thing's gonna happen next it's almost like it was reese's turn to do a nancy myers movie yeah exactly right they ran out of uh, other actresses to do it yeah and i was just like oh like but it wasn't even nancy myers movie. she didn't even get to do an official nancy you know she had to do like the produced by one it was just i like i just also I swear to God, only someone who grew up in L.A., like probably as a privileged white person, would write a movie that takes place in like 2017 L.A. that does not have a single person of color in it. Like not even the servers. Just everyone in this movie was white. 
I was so confused. I was just like, have they never right. stepped outside of the Hollywood Hills? Like, have they ever been to LA? Yeah, I was have like, they ever been to California? What is happening here? Like, what? This is crazy. Also, so there's this one line in the movie that I think pretty much summed up the type of person that Reese Witherspoon's character is. And she goes, Am I the type of person who keeps thinking her hobbies are good enough to be businesses? If you ask that question, yes, you're that person <laughs> you're, you're and you're a terrible oh person. <laughs> Please stop. Not everything you do is amazing. Please stop. And so that's your protagonist. So if you really want to see it, that's the movie for you. I suggest you do not because I was bored out of my mind. I did not enjoy it. Around here and the I bus d- part, there's a preview for it right, right behind my head. Right right behind fantastic. On the TV and it says, irresistible. Resist it. Please resist it. Like, resist. Resist. It, you guys, I just like, resist. honestly, I looked at my watch at an hour into it and it's a two hour movie and I thought about leaving. Yeah. Because I was just like, oh, there's another hour of this? Like, what's going to happen? I don't care what nowhere. happens. You know, it was just, it was so like wish fulfillment of just the director, you know, mm-hmm. like I was like, home again. What does this even mean? I don't, oh, so clearly I'm very upset by right, this And movie. it's called Home Again. Where right. did she go? Did she leave? What right, happened? I guess Do like, understand. Home Again is the service that I use for my dog. It's like the chip implanted. <laughs> oh. Yeah, I thought it was going to be about that. But okay. I, I think that would be more interesting of a movie, watching like a dog <laughs> uh-huh. return home than this film. So sure. I... I'm going to give it 1.3. Oh, I thought you were going to give it a zero. I thought about giving it a zero, but I was like, there are worse movies out there. But, uh-huh. like, this was a pretty, I think this is the worst movie I've seen in a while. And this is a 1.3 out of five. Out of five. For Home Again with Reese Witherspoon. And just really quick, I have to give her a big props for Big Little Lies on yes. HBO. Nominated for 16 Emmys. Go. Fantastic show. Love Reese. I even love some of her dumb films, like Legally Blonde. I love Legally Blonde. I think yeah. Legally Blonde's a great film. I actually, yeah. I, I don't think she'll ever hear this, but I'm not a big Reese Witherspoon fan generally. Like, mm-hmm. I just find her grating. But I love Legally Blonde. I thought she was great in Big Little Lies. This, I was just like, the combo of me not liking her and this be- movie being terrible on its own, just pass. Hard pass. Yeah. Home Again. Don't see it. Stay home again and don't see Home Again. Do you have a second movie this I do, week? yeah. Okay. So you could go see this movie instead of Home Again. It's a bit more niche, though. I will say that. It's called Beach Rats. And it's a coming-of-age story set in Brooklyn with a character grappling with his sexuality. And so what I liked about Beach Rats over something like Home Again is that it left the storytelling more to the characters instead of the, like, overt monologue speeches or super contrived circumstances. It was just, oh, we're just kind of witnessing this character go through this journey. And it's not a big sweeping plot. It's just kind of him ambling through his life, which it it sounds like it could be boring, but it was actually very interesting. Also, let me tell you, Beach Rats, definitely rated R. Very not safe for work. Um, Sometimes I get screeners of things just because, like, they are not in theaters yet. Uh-huh. And so I got a screener of this one and I was going to possibly watch it work. Thank goodness I did not. Because there What's is there is a lot of drugs and a lot of yeah. nudity. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> I was like, this is great, but I'm oh, so yeah. glad I didn't have this up on my screen. <laughs> and it's not, it's, I don't think, it, I don't feel like it was gratuitous nudity, right? And what I, kind I, was it? Full frontal. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. Whoa. Um, both? Um, male and female? Male and female, which is Great. something I feel like we don't get enough. And yeah. sometimes yeah. it wasn't even, like, super sexual, which was interesting. Hmm. Because I do feel like, like, women get, you know, you it, nobody bats an eye or gets, like, super upset if you see, you know, a fully naked woman. But you see, like, a little bit of pain, and it's like, whoa! <laughs> I love it, dude. Which, admittedly, that's what I did in my mind. Oh, oh, pubes. <laughs> like, <laughs> oh, yes. Yeah. yes. That, was, that was literally, I was like, oh, oh, we're going to show everything. Okay, all right, that's what this type of movie is. Can I buy yeah. tickets? for this movie yet? you can't you can't it's out in theaters okay, today cool. yeah but i i didn't feel like it was gratuitous and i felt like there were circumstances that someone actually could be grappling with and for me it was really interesting with beach rats because uh, you know i think it's studying like the labels and exploration of sexuality and for me it's strange because i grew up in the bay area and generally speaking people are very accepting of sexuality and so i grew up with a lot of people where there wasn't stigmas generally and there wasn't like challenges with that and i don't mm-hmm. think people I mean, I'm sure they it grappled with it, but it wasn't when it, when they came out, it wasn't a, a huge deal, or people were very like warm and receptive to it. But I totally understand how other parts of the country, it's a challenge, and it's really, really hard, and it's something that it's it's so challenging to deal with. And you don't want to be called gay, or you don't want to be called bi, or you don't want to be called whatever, because people will disown you, or people won't speak to you. And even in even in parts of Brooklyn, you know, it's not just oh, well, New York is super liberal too. It's like no, this these pockets exist everywhere. Yeah. And so I thought this movie did a really good job of exploring that not super flamboyant, you know, like oh my god, I'm out. Like, mm-hmm. oh, I'm really like trying to figure out who I am as a person. And so I, I really appreciated that uh, about it. And I, I think it did a good job of reminding me, like, yeah, it's tough and confusing. So I think it's worth checking out. Again, cool. it's 
it is rated R. It's not going to be for everyone. Don't bring the kids. Don't bring the kids. But uh-huh. but I think I really do think it was an interesting movie and like one we haven't seen. In a- it did remind me a little bit of Moonlight, and I feel like everything, uh, every okay. kind of coming out story now is going to be compared to Moonlight mm-hmm. for the next few years because it was so good. It was, you know, it really was. I was like, okay, it's no Moonlight, but it yeah. was. It was certainly like a self-contained exploration, and I think there were less like societal impacts because it's a bunch of white kids. But you know, it's I, I still thought it was an interesting movie. So I'm going to give it three point six 